Well, hello for you, and we're going to make some connections today with rational functions. Our goal is I know about special cases of rational functions that have slant asymptotes and ones that have holes. Okay, so we're going to deal with special cases today, making connections with rational functions and equations. So we're taking a look at two different special cases. It says state the restrictions for the following two functions and then graph on the graphing calculator. Um, I'm actually going to use Desmos and not the graphing calculator, um, but you can use whatever's at your disposal. Desmos is much, much more pleasant than the graphing calculator. Uh, so state the restrictions. Well, if we take a look at this thing, and this is a linear divided by, or sorry, a quadratic divided by a linear. Now we haven't looked at ones like these yet. Um, we know though that this cannot equal two because we cannot have a denominator of zero. And we know that this cannot equal four because we cannot have a denominator of zero. Okay, now let's have a look at what these things look like on Desmos. So I'm gonna pull this up. Oops, not quite in my screen. There, we'll go like that. Um, first of all, I graphed the first one. This is the, the one that we um, had stated first. I've got them all graphed here, but we're going to look at the first one first, which makes sense, kind of. Okay, um, the first thing that I want you to notice is that there's actually no horizontal asymptote. If I zoom out on this one, there's no horizontal, it's just forming this big X. There's a vertical, definitely a vertical asymptote, and that vertical asymptote is going to be at 2 because we know that X can't equal 2 because of this denominator, but we're seeing absolutely no horizontal asymptote. However, it looks like as we zoom out, if you take a look, this is forming a line. And the farther out we zoom, the more it actually looks like a line. This thing looks like a vertical line intersecting a, uh, a slant line. And this is because this is our slant asymptote. Uh, it's getting closer and closer and closer to actually being a line in both directions. And so we need to know how to find that slant asymptote. So I'm going to zoom back in. Ooh, there we go. Okay. Uh, and we're going to take a look at the other one because now we've determined that there's such a thing as a slant asymptote uh, where it's getting closer and closer to a line and we'll have to figure that one out. Um, and in fact, here's the line it's getting closer and closer to. Uh, I'm going to zoom out. Um, the it's x plus 1. I'll zoom out, oops, sorry, out again so you can see that it's getting close, close to that thing. Um, and we'll almost become that thing and will very much look like it becomes that thing, that line when we're, uh, when we're zoomed way out. Um, but we're going to see how we find that line. Uh, so let's hide those two things and let's pull out this other one, x plus 3 over x times x minus 4 over x minus 4 and th that's just a line. Okay, why is that just a line? Well, that's just a line because these two things cancel. And if these two things cancel, that's just x plus 3. Uh, but we also talked about, if we go back here, we state the restrictions, we said x cannot equal 4. Well, for a line, lines can be, x can be anything. There's no restriction on the domain. Or is there? Let's have a look on here. If I z go along here, what happens as I approach x equals 4? Whoop, what did that say? That said, at x equals 4, the function is undefined. There's a hole in that function. There's a hole in my function, dear Liza, dear Liza. Okay, it's undefined at x equals 4. We cannot define it. Um, so we call it a hole. Okay, so we're talking about slant asymptotes and holes in functions. Okay, so let's have a look-see and you might want to do just a little rough sketch of what you saw there. You saw this thing that had no horizontal asymptote and you saw this thing that cancelled down so that it was a line but it was a line that at 4, at right here, right there, it was undefined there was a hole there. Okay, 
So both functions are quadratic over linear. What accounts for the difference in the graph? What does the variable restriction have on the graph? What effect does the variable restriction on a graph? Okay, the second function simplifies to a line by canceling a factor. Uh, there is a gap or hole on the line when the denominator is zero. Okay, so now notice in the first graph that there's no horizontal asymptote. If the numerator is exactly one degree higher than the denominator, the graph tends to an oblique or slant asymptote. Um, that is if there's no cancellation like the, in this function. Uh, to find it, you must perform a division. So the first thing we're going to do is expand this out. I get x squared minus 4x plus 3x is minus x, and then 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, divided by x minus 2. Okay, so we're going to use synthetic division here. Um, what makes the denominator 0 is 2, so that's going to be our synthetic division divisor. Uh, and I'm going to put in 1 minus 1, negative 12. So 0, 1, 2, 1. Um, and 2 and negative 10. So this thing now becomes, if I want to write this quotient, if I want to write f at x, uh, it says q at x here, but if I want to write it, it is x plus 1 from here. This is 1x plus 1 uh, with a remainder of negative 10 over x plus 2. Now, if we think about it now, As x tends to positive or negative infinity, as x gets really, really, really big, um, this thing is going to go to 0. Okay, This is going to go to 0 uh, because we have a constant divided by infinity. And anytime we have a constant over infinity, when x goes to infinity, um, that thing's going to go to 0. So our f at x, or in this case I've written as q of x, tends to x plus 1. So this is the overpowering part of the function as x goes to infinity, and this is our slant asymptote. Therefore, y uh, equals x plus 1 is a slant asymptote. So to find the slant asymptote you just have to make that division and then your quotient part is your slant asymptote. Uh, the remainder part is going to go to zero. Okay, so let's have a look at an example here. Uh, graph the following function. There's only one function here. By examining asymptotes and intercepts. Okay, the first thing we want to do is factor it. Um, if we factor it, we find not only where, um, where the vertical asymptotes are, but we can also possibly simplify the thing. So if I factor the numerator, the numerator is going to be 2x and x, and then I have to multiply to 15. I'm going to try 3 and 5. And I know that the signs are the same and they're both positive, so we're adding to 13. So that gives me 10x and 3x, so I've got it. So those are both positive. Now the bottom, I am going to hope something's going to cancel. So I'm hoping that there's going to be a 2x in the front. Okay. Uh, this may not always work out, maybe things won't cancel, but I'm going to hope that they do, so I'm going to give it a try. So I'm going to try having a 2x here, which means I have to have a 3x here in order to get a 6x out front. Uh, and it would be really nice if this were a 3, because if this were a 5, I still got a 3 in here, so that's not going to match up. So if this is 3, um, and it's not going to be 3. So this is not going to work. There's no way that can be a 3 because I'm multiplying to the 5. So maybe it's this one that's going to match up. Maybe I need a 6x and just a plain old x. And if this is x plus 5, then this would be a 1. And now let's double check it. 
I need this to be a minus 1, um, so I'm going to get 30 and minus 1 gives me positive 29. So this actually checks and these things are going to cancel. Now the restrictions on the variables, we still have to state them. So for our restrictions on the variables, uh, let's actually write what f at x simplifies to. f at x simplifies to 2x plus 3 over 6x minus 1. Uh, but we have to state the restrictions on the variables. Um, we know that this is going to be one of our vertical asymptotes. Um, so we have to say x cannot equal uh, 1 sixth. And then this thing that cancelled is a problem too. So x can't equal negative 5. Now when we do this, this one here is going to be an asymptote. And this one here is going to be a whole. Oh, maybe I shouldn't put those two uh, two abbreviations right next to each other. Let's call this a VA for vertical asymptote. And then this is going to be a whole since there was a cancellation there. Uh, okay, so our vertical asymptote is 1 sixth and we have a whole here. Now let's examine this thing because we, we know what to do with a linear over a linear. Uh, this is going to be exactly the same. Um, as when we did a linear over a linear, except that when we do graph it, we have to say that there is a hole at negative 5. So our vertical asymptote, we know, is 1 sixth. Our horizontal asymptote, you hopefully recall that if I find the horizontal asymptote, it's going to be 2 over 6, uh, which is going to be 1 third. Um, the y-intercept, when I find the y-intercept, I set the x-intercept equal to zero, or the x is equal to zero, so that's going to give me a y-intercept of negative three, and an x-intercept. Uh, the x-intercept occurs when the numerator is zero, so to get the numerator to be zero, I need uh, negative three halves. Okay, so now let's graph these things. I need a vertical asymptote at 1 sixth. So it's going to be here somewhere. Do, 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 do. So this is x equals 1 sixth. I need a horizontal asymptote at 1 third. So so y equals 1 third. Then I need a y intercept at 3, so there needs to be a y-intercept. This is 1 third, so up here somewhere. So there's our y-intercept of 3. Oops, sorry, that's going to be negative 3. Um, y-intercept of negative 3 is down here somewhere. Negative 3. And I need an x-intercept of negative 3 halves, which would be negative 1.5. So it's going to be about here. So negative 1.5. And now we just sort of have to fill that in. It's going to go like that. And since this is just our creeper graph, we know that this is going to go like this over here too. Now here's the difference. At negative 5, there's a hole. So we got to find out where that hole is uh, by finding out what f at negative 5 is. Now, f at negative 5, you're going to say, but f at negative 5 doesn't exist. How can you find out what f at negative 5 is? Well, f at negative 5 exists for this function. It just doesn't exist for this one, because this is the one where f can't have a negative 5. So I can sub in negative 5 into here, and I'm going to get an answer. Um, and that answer is going to tell me where my hole is. So I've got 2 times negative 5 plus 3 over 6 times negative 5 minus 1. Um, that's negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7 over negative 31. So my hole is going to occur at negative 7 over 31.
So that's going to be negative 7 over 31 at negative 5 is over here. So we put a big round dot on there. Let's point at it and say that that hole is at negative 5 comma negative or positive 7 over 31. Those two negatives cancel. So positive 7 over 31. And that's about all we need to do. We could examine uh, the, the behavior at the asymptotes if we wanted to, but when we have a linear over a linear, this is really all we need to graph it um, and graph it fairly accurately. So let's take a look at the next question here. A Greek mathematician, Pythagoras, is credited with the discovery of the golden rectangle. This is considered to be the rectangle with the dimensions that are the most visually appealing. In a golden rectangle, the length and width are related by this proportion given here. Length divided by width equals width over length minus 1. A billboard of length 15 meters is going to be built. What must its width be if it is to form a golden rectangle? rectangle. Uh, so this is a matter of solving a ratio. I'm given, uh, I'm given this piece of information. Length is 15 meters. So since the length is 15 meters, I'm going to sub that in. So let's set L equal to 15 meters. If L is equal to 15 meters, we get 15 over W equals w over 15 minus w. Now that's a lot of w's. Um, now I'm going to clear fractions or if you want we can think of cross multiplying. Uh, if I cross multiply w times w is w squared and then we do 15 times 15 minus w. And when I expand that out, I get w squared equals 225 minus 15w. This is looking quadratic. Uh, let's get everything over onto this side. So I get w squared. I'm going to add 15w to both sides and subtract 225 on both sides. And that's going to equal 0. So now here's the thing I have to solve. It's just a quadratic. You could give it to grade, uh, grade 10 to solve. It does not actually factor. So it's not factorable. So our only recourse here is the quadratic formula. Our old friend, the quadratic formula. W equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B square minus 4 AC bloop all divided by 2A. So fast forward just a little bit and this is what we actually get for an exact answer. Uh, however we can simplify it a little bit. Negative 15 plus or minus um, 1125 is actually 225 uh, times 5 and 225 is the perfect square of 15. So I can take out negative 15 plus or minus 15 root 5 divided by 2. Um, and I can't really simplify a whole lot further there. So when you plug that into the calculator, here are your two answers. Approximately 9.3 and approximately negative 24.3. Now negative 24.3 since we're talking about sides of a rectangle, this is in ad miscible. Can't use it. Side of a rectangle cannot be negative. So we can say, therefore, the dimension should be uh, length equal to 15 that we're given and width equal to 9.3 to be a golden rectangle. And that concludes this lesson and it also concludes this unit.